What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the newest version of Rhino, which just released with a lot of great new features, Rhino 8. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is the page that Rhino put out where they talk about all of the new features contained inside of this new version. And as you can see, there's a ton of stuff contained inside of this new version that I think are gonna be super exciting to talk about. Um, but if you wanna get in depth with these, you can do that from this page, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, from an upgrade standpoint, my understanding is you just have to buy a new license for Rhino 8. If you don't buy the license for Rhino 8, you can continue using your Rhino 7 if that's what you had. Um, but if you want the new version, then you just need to go purchase a new version of Rhino. But let's jump over and take a look at some of the new features contained inside of this new version. All right, so first off, we've got a new feature, which we already talked about on the channel, but it's the shrink wrap tool. And what the shrink wrap tool does is it basically takes a series of objects or meshes or um, really anything, like we've got point clouds right here, and you can select them and you can run shrink wrap. And when you run shrink wrap, what it's going to do is it's going to basically generate um, a 3D mesh. And I'm gonna click on the button for preview right here and maybe hide input objects so you can see this. But what this does is this gives you the ability to create an actual mesh in here um, based on that object. And so you can take that and you can use that to get a 3D mesh that's actually closed in. So you could go like 3D print this or other things like that. And so you can use this to optimize the polygons in here as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this mesh, but it's a really fast way to generate usable meshes using things that aren't necessarily usable in the real world, right? You can do the same thing with multiple shapes like this. You can do a shrink wrap and, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna preview this. I find the preview to be helpful as do I find uh, hiding the input objects, but you can see how, and again, I'm gonna to toggle my polygon optimization percentage off a little bit, but you can see how you can use this in order to create really good meshes in here, just from a couple different shapes. All right, so next up, we've got some improvements to the sub D function, specifically um, having to do with allowing you to add creases to shapes. There's some kind of detailed documentation linked to from this page, um, but basically the way this works is this allows you to modify a soft crease along different edges. Okay, and so if you do a control shift, we're just gonna select these vertices right here, because this is all sharp right now. But if you go into sub D and you go down and pick the option for crease, what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you pick different vertices and set different weights. Right? So if we start at this vertex right here, we put it at zero, and then we set this one at the end to 100, you can actually set um, kind of like a adjustable crease along here. So I could select this one, type in 75, and notice what that's doing, you can kind of see it in here, is the sub D is kind of adjusting the geometry that's created in here. And then once you're done, right, when I hit the enter key, notice how you've got this kind of like variable adjustment. So they've got an example of this over on the side as well, but you can use that crease in order to kind of set the way that the crease works along a surface when you're using sub D. All right, so we've also got improvements in the way that the C planes work, which is a great new feature. Um, basically now what you have is you have an option to do an automatic C plane, meaning it's going to auto align to something that you select. So uh, what you can do is say that you've got a house like this one and um, you want your C plane to align with this wall so that you can draw like a door or something like that. You can toggle on auto C plane and as soon as you select the object, right? So if I do a control shift and I select the surface, notice what this is gonna do is it's gonna select or automatically align your C plane to that location. So notice how no matter where you go, that's going to align that C plane. So that is super helpful because you don't have to do a bunch of that manual alignment. And then the next feature, which we've also talked about a little bit on the channel is near and dear to my heart as a SketchUp person as well. And it's the ability to use push pull. And so let's say for example, that we drew a rectangle right here along the surface. Notice how this is really easy because of that auto C plane, but now, if you do a push pull and you select this surface and hit enter and move your mouse, notice how this allows you to either extrude a face out or back like this. And so if you extrude back and you click, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to cut a hole. Now, if you were to activate that push pull tool, 
hit the enter key. Didn't even need to hit the enter key in this case. And then click over here. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna cut openings in both walls right here. And so this is extremely helpful for um, doing things like this simple architectural modeling, cutting doors and windows and other things like that. All right, so the next feature is one that I haven't really had a chance to get super in depth with, but they've basically changed and adjusted the gumball with some additional tools. Now, one thing that I really like about this is we now have the ability to dynamically relocate the gumball. So all you have to do is just double click the handle like this, and you can move where that gumball is. So relocation of the gumball is really easy. There's some additional stuff in here with this one. I haven't had a chance to really dive into it, but I'm really excited to. Um, so more about this in the future, but just that dynamic relocation for me is just massively helpful. And notice how this is kind of inferencing to anywhere in here. So I can inference over different edges, different points, and I can set that gumball location just by double clicking and moving it. All right, so next up, we've got the ability to use inset on curved surfaces, um, allowing you to take a curve and then like inset it inward and then use push pull in order to extrude your shapes inward to add different detail. So um, that one's pretty simple. Um, the way that it works is you can just select a face on a surface, right? So if I do a shift control or a control shift, and then I type in inset, Notice how this is going to give me the ability to inset inside of this curve. And I can type in values, right, in order to set how far this insets. But then if I wanted to, I can do a control shift, select this, and then I can push pull it. You can see how I can use this to set kind of an inset on this surface right here. So um, definitely something that's super helpful for creating recesses on these curved surfaces. All right, so next up, we've got the ability to add section styles to our clipping planes. And so this is actually a really interesting feature because it allows you to affect things about the way that things look when you take a clipping plane across objects. And so basically the way that it works is say that you've got um, an object like this one that's been clipped using a clipping plane. And so for your objects, Notice how when you click on them, there's an option here for section style, and you can set them to either be by layer, by parent, or by clipping plane. Well, in this case, we're gonna set them by layer and go over into our layers tab. Well, notice how this now gives you the option to adjust things like the color of the lines, right? So this wall, say I wanted the lines in the wall to be red, you can set that right here. You can also set if it has a material applied to it, or if you go over, go over here on the right-hand side to section style, notice how you have the ability to apply a hatch pattern to this object. And um, when you do that, and I'm gonna click on okay, just so you can see this, this is going to add a hatch. And you can adjust the hatch so for example, say I wanted this to be bigger, I can set my scale to three on this hatch right here. But say that this ground right here, which is on my earth layer, I wanted this to have more of like a brown outline. You can see how I can add that right here. And then I can add a section style. So if I scroll down, notice how there's like an earth that I can add right here. So you can use this to really quickly add styles to your sections in Rhino. So they've also added a function to do selective clipping, meaning you can set whether clipping planes only show one portion or another portion of the model. So you can set what things clip inside of Rhino. And so the way that that's gonna work is say that you've got a condition like this one where you've got a clipping plane that's cutting all the way through your model like this. So like, for example, there's two ways you can do this, right? You can exclude objects or you can exclude layers. So let's say we were to do objects. We're gonna set objects clipped. And we're gonna click on exclude selected and we're gonna click on this rebar that's in here. Well, when I hit enter, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna add those objects to um, basically a clipping objects group that says don't clip these out. And so within this group, I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape right here. And we're gonna try to find some of these rebar stirrups, but you could do the same thing with these rebar pieces right here. So notice how now the section plane is only cutting this concrete piece, but it's excluding the objects that I have selected in here. Alternatively, you can also set this to exclude layers. So if I wanted to exclude the rebar layers, notice how I can use that in order to easily exclude that from my clipping plane, giving you a lot more control over what you can show with your clipping planes. So we now also have the ability to generate dynamic 
2D drawings based on sections in your model. So um, basically what that does is that allows you to take a section plane across your model, and this is going to dynamically create a 2D drawing that'll update if you move your, um, if you move your clipping plane around. So let's say that we had this object right here and we wanted to create a plan from it. So you can move that clipping plane to wherever you want it to be. And then when you do this, you can run the clipping drawings command. And notice how there's some options in here. Like for example, you can set if you want there to be a background, which I usually say yes. Um, but then once you place this in your scene, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a two dimensional drawing in here. Well, watch what happens when I move this around. So I'm gonna take this section and I'm gonna move it. Notice how this drawing is going to dynamically update based on where that clipping plane is. So notice how if I move that back even further, um, then I'm gonna be able to see even more in here. So you can use this in order to really quickly create these 2D drawings um, out of your 3D shapes using clipping planes. So this next feature isn't necessarily one that I would use, but it's definitely really interesting. Um, you've got the ability now to use clipping planes to extract multiple sections from your model. So see how you can use this in order to create a two-dimensional like profile um, for doing things like CNC routing or 3D printing. Um, so if that is something that you're into, into, I can definitely see this being super interesting for you. Um, I'm not especially into this one just because I don't do that kind of modeling, but it it is a pretty cool feature. And so they've also made a number of different improvements to the Cycles rendering engine. So it should render faster um, on Apple PCs, uh, computers using NVIDIA cards, um, and AMD GPUs. So just in general, going to be faster. Um, there's also been a number of different changes to the rendering user interface. I'm not going to get too far into that in this video, um, but note that they have made a number of different changes in here for how you can manage these things in order to make rendering easier. So from a UV mapping standpoint, um, they've massively improved the Rhino UV editor. Um, so now this is gonna work kind of detached from the main window, um, meaning that you can use it with multiple monitors or other things like that. We've also got multiple different tools in here for pinning of vertices, straightening edge chains. So if you do like advanced UV editing, this could definitely be helpful. Um, there's also different algorithms that you can use for the kind of UV mapping that's in here. So if we take a look at this, right, for example, in this example file, um, you've got options in here now um, to do unwrapping by conformal as well as as rigid as possible. You can see how you can move this around and make the adjustment in here. And so you can see how that's now a standalone editor right here that's got options for different unwrap methods and other things like that. If you do wanna give that a try, there's a UV mapping model that you can download and kind of mess around with in order to get familiar with the UV mapping. And so Rhino now includes native procedural textures, meaning that these textures are being calculated natively inside of Rhino using your GPU, meaning that you can go through and you can get really fast results when you make your changes. And so in order to see these procedural textures, you need to be in rendered mode, but notice how you can now come in here and you can make adjustments to things about the texture and they're basically going to update in real time, right? So notice how I can add like some blending across these colors. I can adjust the UV mapping in here to set the repeat, or you can select other materials Material types in here as well. So like this granite material, for example, I can adjust this and I can set things like the vein width and other things like that in order to really quickly generate, um, in order to really quickly generate a procedural marble material. And so in addition, we've got a new monochrome look in our viewport. And so this is actually a really good look because it takes our object and um, basically it adds this additional line weight to the outside. And I personally think it makes I personally think that it makes the uh, makes the viewport look really good. So um, I'm a big fan of the monochrome rendering. It's a very clean way to kind of show off your work. So there's a number of things that have been changed in Grasshopper. Uh, you can kind of take a look at these. I have not gone in depth on these, but you've got new object attributes and annotations and other things that you can add in in Grasshopper. So you can definitely check those out on this page. So we've also got some significant enhancements to the way that we can do line types inside of Rhino. Um, so basically you can add things like taper to your line types in order to make them look a little bit more kind of artistic, right? So if you go up to window and you pop up the line types panel, 
right here. You may want to expand that, otherwise it just kind of looks like this and you don't actually see any of the options. But when you expand that and you create a new line pattern, let's say we wanted to create a taper in here. You can set this where you've got a taper on the middle and on the ends, right? So if I set this to like two, um, notice how this is tapering in and out on my lines, giving me a completely different look in here. You can also set that for things like your dotted lines right here. So notice how if I set this taper up, it's gonna do the same thing, right? It's gonna taper up in the middle and down on the ends or vice versa, depending on what you select. So a lot more control over what you can do with line types inside of Rhino. And so there are a bunch of other functions in here as well. I don't have time to hit them all, um, but you've got the option to create reflected ceiling plans. So they've got this new um, parallel reflected projection. And so this allows you to really quickly create those reflected ceiling plans with a high level of detail inside of Rhino. Rhino also has a new code editor in here, which is going to allow um, better extensibility of the program. And then there are a ton of different modeling tools. You can actually kind of, you, you can scroll down to this one and you can click on it and it actually shows you all of the different tools. One of the nice things that they've done is anytime something was adjusted in Rhino 8, um, they've actually come through here and listed it as being new in 8 or if they changed an existing feature, they've also labeled it as new in eight. So that's definitely super helpful as well because you can go through and see exactly what's been changed and adjusted. I think they've actually um, added more in here than they've even talked about on their release page, but this is a super exciting release and I'm super excited to see what people can do with it. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what features you're excited about and what you'd like to see me cover on the channel in the future. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.